Hi everyone, today I'm going to be playing Nations with the Dynasties expansion. I'll give you a quick overview of what's new if you're interested. If you'd just like to see the game, then I'll put a link on the screen and you can just click that. And so let's get started with what's new. So we've got progress cards. There are 44 new progress cards, which isn't much compared to the huge amount that was in the base game already, but more is always better. Uh, there's new type. There are natural wonders now. I've just grabbed one here at random. So any new cards that might come up in the game, I've got this D here to show they come from the Dynasties expansion. We have natural wonders. So instead of the normal wonders where you take an architect, when you take a natural wonder, your next, however many turns it says here, however many squares it's got, your next few turns have to be spent discovering the natural wonder. So you're basically giving up a certain number of turns to be able to discover this for free, but it doesn't cost anything like gaining architects and there's no worry of running out of them. You're just gonna have to, in the solo game anyway, keep rolling for the dummy player while you try and resolve this. Uh, it's, some of them are worth points, some have powers, just like normal wonders, but you discover them in a different way. We have a ton of new player boards. Instead of the A and B sides from the base game, they are all D to show they're from the dynasties, but they're all basically the equivalent of the B-sides. They're all different and with special powers and things. And the expansion includes these dynasty cards. So we have two for each civilization. And this deck here, that includes all of the B-sides of the civilizations that came with the base game, which is really good. So these dynasty cards I can use during the game to replace my special ability. So I'm playing as Korea in this playthrough, and when I buy a Golden Age, I can hire two Architects for free, but I could change that. Now, every round when we do Architects, the same number of Architects that come out, we bring out a number of Turmoil cards, and I can choose to put my Civilization into Turmoil, and when I do that, I lose two stability for the rest of the round, but now I can either play a dynasty card or take two money. So if I'm really desperate, I could use it for the money, but I could use it to change my special power. And when I do that, I cover up the old one and this gets replaced so I could have a military based one or one where I can kind of bank resources on my special power as an action. And then at the end, take double the amount back. So we've got Natural Wonders, we've got the new cards, we've got Dynasties and Turmoil. And then there's all sorts of special rules for all of the new cards and the interactions and things. So that's basically what's new. And if you don't know about the solo game, instead of event cards, we have these event tiles that come with the game. And we'll draw an event tile instead of an event card. That's going to show us where the dummy player is going to start this round on military and stability. And that can jump around like crazy. It gets reset every round to whatever the tile says. Uh, how many architects are available? How many spaces the shadow player is going to move on the culture track or the book track? Uh, the famine level. And after we do certain actions, which is most of the actions, after we either deploy a worker on military, we don't have to if we deploy them on normal buildings. If we deploy someone on, on military, buy a progress card, uh, hire an architect, or do a special action, then we have to roll this dice. And if we roll a one to four like this, we would clear the three column if there were any cards in it. If it's empty, then nothing happens. If we roll a five or a six, then the tile has got special instructions for us. So this would be lose a lot of architects or the dummy player would lose stability because there is points to be had if we can get ahead of him on stability at the end of the round. There is a point if we manage to do that. If we aren't ahead of him, we lose a point. So. It's kind of important to do. And as always, there's scoring at the end of each age for the book track. And if we are ahead of him, then we get three points. But there's no penalty for being behind. But that's a lot of points to give up. So we want to try and go for that. So I'm going to be playing on Prince difficulty, which is what the rule book recommends. And I'm not, I'm not that experienced. 
uh, nations. Uh, it basically means there's a there's a growth phase in the game at the start of every turn, and you can choose to take resources. The difficulty basically just says how many of that resource you're going to get if you choose the resources. So I'm just playing on Prince for now, and we are career. This is our starting bunch of resources, and I think we're ready to go. So I'll just fill up the progress board and we can get started. Okay, and there's what's available. So let's get started. I should mention if you're new to nations altogether, then I will be explaining what I'm doing as I take the actions for the first time. So hopefully you'll be able to pick that up as you go along and I'll try and mention when the things are new. Uh, but you can you can see if there's, if there's ever a card with a D on it there, that's from the Dynasty's expansion. There's all sorts of little icons from the base game there are some promos and things mixed in here, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. Let's get started. So, the first thing we do is the maintenance phase. Round marker. Advance the round marker. We are in the first round of the Age of Antiquity. Uh, there are four rounds, so there, well, there's four ages, so there's eight rounds. Uh, we fill up the progress cards. In future rounds, it's going to shuffle down. The ones and twos will get discarded because these cost one, two, and three to take and any that were left in the three come down here and we fill it back up with whatever round we're in. So now we come to growth. Oh, I should, I should mention this player aid is on Board Game Geek. This doesn't come with the game. Uh, it was made by uh, Christian V and it's great. It's got the little extra things for scoring for the solo game and it's got the multiplayer game on it as well, but this is solo. So growth, I have the choice now. I start with five workers here. I can take another worker but if I take one, I am going to have to produce three extra food to feed him or I'm going to need uh, my stability is going to drop by three and my stability starts off at zero because I have nothing. I have no special powers. Some, some nations do have special powers. So I think, I think to get started, I would like some money, but I don't have a way of producing food. Is there, there's nothing really on the board here that produces food, but I think we've, we've got enough of everything else. I think, I think I'll take some money, three cash. And it's three because we're on the Prince difficulty. And now new tile. So we come to the one tiles, draw the first one and now we set the dummy player to military two and stability three. So we're going to have to beat that stability three if we want the points at the end of the round. There are three architects in the pool there. And the dummy player gets one book and he starts off with two. We start off as player one with one book. He starts off with two. And that's it. The famine at the end of the round is going to be two food we need to pay. And if the dummy player rolls a five or a five, he's going to take two architects from the pool. If he rolls a six, he is going to get two books. So let's get started. So I think I would like, I would like this golden age because I can get architects for free. But those architects are no good to me unless I have got a wonder to build. So I think so. This would give me this would give me some culture, and I would get a golden age bonus. So taking the golden age would be even more attractive. It would get me uh, three stone rather than two. So I think that's a nice start. So let's buy this great library. So out of the actions that we can do, I am buying a progress card. I pay one because it's coming from the bottom row and I place it in my wonder under construction section here. So I need to pay one for my money and that just stays there. I don't get any of the benefits until I've built it and I build it by, I can use an action to take architects and I pay this amount of stone here, or I am going to hope to use my special power as long as the dummy player does not take the things in the three column. So let's roll his dice. He's going to take the four column. So he's taking some nice advisors away from me, but that's not really the plan at the moment. So let's carry on with the plan. I will take this golden age here while it's still here. And that's going to cost me a money. 
it's going to get me two stone right now. So let's grab two. And when I buy a golden age, I may also hire two architects for free. Now I don't need the two because my wonder only has one and there was no other option. That's the only wonder that came out. So I hire an architect for free and it, this comes from the supply, not the main pool. And so he can come down here, which means we complete the wonder. It slides all the way along here. And now at the end of the round, I am going to get two books. And whenever I take a Golden Age card, I get to boost the bonus that it gives me by one. But I lose this wonder if I have the least stability. Okay, time for the Shadow Player. He rolls a five, which means two of the architects in the pool are taken, which doesn't affect me because there are no more wonders. So what would I like to do? Now, I could take the war because if the dummy player gets the war, then he has a higher military than me, and I am going to have to either put some effort into military or take some, take some hits on money and a point. So I could take it in advance, but it's going to cost me a money just to take it. I could go into military, and once I have five or more military, I can grab Babylonia that's going to produce me money every round. So it's a shame Nubia isn't a bit lower because I would only need three military. So I have no way of producing food and there isn't really anything on the board apart from buying that. That would be nice. The natural wonder here, it only costs two, but I would have to give up uh, the next two turns basically. The dummy player would get to roll. Oh, it's three turns actually. The dummy player would get to roll three times without me doing anything. and could potentially clear every other card off here. I think let's, since he's the only one left, let's grab an advisor while we can. So St. Augustine, he is going to get me some stability. And if I have the most stability at the end of the round, I will also get two books from him. So that costs two money. Oh, Let's see what the shadow player does. That's a four. There's nothing in the four column. So he just does nothing, which is nice. Okay. So I could put some effort into getting some military. I would need to spend three turns putting people on my archer. It would cost me three stone and I would produce that gold though for the rest of the game, which is a nice start. These could be completely gone by the time we actually get there, which would be disappointing. So I'm gonna put a person on military there uh, I just take one of my workers that's not doing anything and it costs one stone to put a worker on here. So that's a stone. And when we place someone on a military building, the shadow player gets a turn. He gets rid of column four again. So we definitely need another archer going there. So that costs me another stone. And the shadow player goes again. Three. And that's a shame, that's the only battle that was out. If we take battles, as long as we've got someone on a military card, we look at this value here, which is four on my archers, and I could pick either books, food, or stone and take four of them. But that's gone now. So now, it's a bit of a gamble, really, because the dummy player could still take Babylonia away from me. But let's spend another stone and put a guy on here. And I should be updating this. Uh, everything on your board is generated in production. Apart from, you'll see stability and military have these squares, which means they get updated as soon as something changes on them. So I have six military now, and I have one stability. So I need to work on that stability. But now I have six military. So as long as it's still there, I'll be able to take Babylonia. So let's see what the shadow player does. And number five, he takes two more architects. So there are no more architects in the pool, but there's no wonders, so it kind of balances out. I'm gonna pay one gold now, and I am going to colonize Babylonia. I can do this because my military is five or more, and place it there. It's not worth any points, but it's gonna generate me two money 
in every round. To get it in the first round is quite nice. So let's see what the shadow player does. Number two, just in time as well, because the shadow player has cleared out that column. So now, so I'm not too, the only thing I'm worried about if I took this wonder, the only thing I would be worried about is the shadow player getting to roll a lot and maybe getting a lot of books because I want to stay ahead of him on that score. But so I could pay two of my last three money and it's basically to just get two points at the end of the game. Or I could just call the round over. I could spend three money there and get two more income. And then these colonies can be replaced later on by better ones. Or I could grab the natural wonder. Or I can just stop because putting people on the normal buildings doesn't trigger the shadow player role. So I can just kind of end the round there. I can pull the people off here. Normally you'd want to do that because other nations military and you see the, the military card that we discarded earlier. They normally have a cost for keeping people on there. So although being strong in military is good in a way, it's got a cost to it. Mine hasn't got a cost to it, but I would like to use these people where they're more useful, really. You want to be ahead on military to be first in turn order. Although in solo, it's not, it's not always the biggest deal. So what do we want? We want stability. We need stability, really. I need at least, I need to at least put two people on here. So I'll just do that with these two. And that costs two stone. It's a stone each there. I need uh, more than two because I need to be more than him to not get the penalty. And having the most will get me two more books. So it's not all bad. I'd like to gain some more stone as well. But the downside of that is taking people off the military and putting them onto stone costs the stone, so it's only really a good investment if I leave them there for a long time. See, grabbing the war won't be any good, so what shall I do? I think I'm going to generate enough books as it is. Maybe I should just leave them on there. They haven't got a cost, and it would just, it would just kind of cost me the stone anyway to move them along. It would generate more money. But I think I'm going to be okay. Let's just leave it like that. So I am going to pass, and so it's going to be the end of round. So we move on to the resolution phase here. So we do production. So money, I produce two there, and one each there. So I produce four money. One two, three, four. Food. I don't produce any food, but I don't lose any food yet. Stone. I don't produce any stone and books. So we have in production phase, if I have the most stability, which I do produce two books. So I am now tying the shadow player on three there. Any more? No. Oh, yep. Yeah. Two there with my great library. So hopefully some more golden ages will come out so I can make better use of that. If you have negative stability, which can happen because your, your workers and other things can lose your stability, you would have to lose a point and then lose a book for every negative stability you have because you're in revolt. Well, your, your population are in revolt. So now we have war. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you war later because the, the dummy player will buy one. It's not really in your interest to buy one unless you're weak in military and you want the war to have a low value. But hopefully I'll show you war later on. So stability. We get a point if our stability is higher than the shadow. It is. We've got five to three. So I'll just grab a point. Otherwise lose a point. Famine. We need to pay the indicated amount of food, which for this round is two, which is what I started with. So hopefully, I, re I really need to produce food in the next round. And end of age scoring does not happen yet. So back to the top, maintenance phase, round marker. So let's move on to the second round of the Age of Antiquity. Second stage, progress cards. So let's refill those. We get rid of these two. This slides down. 
And now we fill this up with more cards. Okay, these are the cards that have come out for round B of antiquity. And now we come to growth. So I have to decide right now, do I want to take a person, which I probably should, or do I want to take some resources? I think I'm going to grab, let's grab some money again. I don't know if that's the best move I could do. It's just you can't get money from these battles, so I feel like I'm going to be okay on other resources. So let's see the tile. So the shadow player is going to start off at two military again and four stability this time. There is one architect in the pool and he gets two books. So he's up to my point. So we need to generate three food by the end of this and he's going to either gain military or lose stability, which is nice for me anyway, because if he loses stability, these people don't need to be on here necessarily. So I had the better military at the end of round one, so I still go first. And there is a, there's a nice little combo here, if I can get this going. I could grab the Sphinx, and using my Golden Age, I could then buy this. I could buy this golden age and use my special ability to hire both the architects for it for free, which is very nice. And the power of this golden age, draw next age cards until we find the first golden age wonder or building and play it and then discard the other cards that I draw. So I would really like to do that. Let's see if the shadow player's rolls let me do that. So that's going to cost two money to start constructing the Sphinx. Let's see what the shadow player does. Three, so just in time as well, because it would be gone. And now I'm gonna spend three money and grab this golden age, the, oh dear, Antikytheria mechanism. I hope that's right. So I've bought a golden age so I can hire two architects for free from the supply and they will go on here and slide down. So now I'm gonna produce a stone at the end of every round. And when I ready a new wonder, I will get five stone. So I want new wonders really. And there is a natural wonder here. So when I buy a colony, I get three extra books. So there's a lot of things coming up here that kind of link together. But let's do the golden age that I bought. I don't think, I could be wrong about this, don't take my word for it, but I don't think Golden Age bonus applies on this. I think it's just when you would get resources for things. So let's, let's do this. Draw next age cards. So we draw from age two until we find a Golden Age, Wonder or Building. There we go. So that is a Wonder. So the Great Wall. So it, it produces stability. And if I pass first, which in the solo game, you always pass first. If there's any comparisons to certain things, you are always the one passing first and doing certain things. So if I pass first, I don't lose points to war. So that's quite good because if a war happens, so no, oh, no wars out, no wars are out this round, so I'm safe. But if you, if the dummy player had a higher military than me and started a war, say he was at 10, the war's strength would be at 10. At the end of the round, if my military is not that, I lose points and then there's a punishment. So I would lose certain types of resources, but the losses are mitigated by your stability, but you still lose the points for the war. Here, if I can get this built, I don't lose points to the war. So that's quite nice. And when it's ready, I can gain five stone but there is only one architect available this round. So that's gonna to have to be in age two. So what am I going to do? So I think, I think the dummy player should have a turn actually, because I just bought a card. So let's see, he clears out one. That's a shame, there were nice things in there, but it's less for me to think about, I suppose. Okay, so what's left? I need, so I need three, I need three food by the end of the round. 
I could grab this so I can produce some food that would produce two food and a book every for every person that's on it. Or I could just grab this, which I think I'm probably going to do. All right, I, I might do both, but I'm going to grab this just for one money because it's quite cheap. So I'm buying a battle. So I'm taking part in the Siege of Troy. So one money. And we look at my raid value. It's four. And I can gain four books, food or stone. And given my situation, I'm definitely going to go for the food. So four food now. Okay, and Shadow Player gets to roll again. Six, which means he loses two stability. So he's now at two. So one of these can potentially come off here and go somewhere a bit more useful for me. Now I can't buy the Natural Wonder, which I was hoping to because I got this, but this could be better for me. I'm going to take two of my workers from my Archer space which is a free action, I don't need to do anything to do that. That is going to bring me level with the Shadow Player for his military. So when we're working out player order, you break ties with stability, and I'm going to be top in stability, I'm hoping. So let's, let's grab someone off the Confucian Academy as well, because I don't need that stability right now. I could leave them on there. Yeah, let's let's leave them on there and maybe we'll use stability to take a person next round. But let's put these two people on the quarry. So that's going to cost me two stone, but they're going to earn me two stone. So really that balances out, but I'm going to earn some money now. Uh, the reason I did that is because I would, I would have to put so many people on to get nine military strength that it wouldn't really be worth it. It would be nice to get a new colony but not that important. So, I believe that is me passing. So, resolution phase, production. So money, I now produce four, six money. So I should be safe from having to take it as growth like I've been doing. Uh, food, still no food production. Stone, I produce two, three stone. And books, I produce two. And if I have the most stability, two more. So that's four for me. So we are at nine to the Shadow Player's five. So we'll be getting some points from that. Uh, we don't have negative stability, so we don't worry about that. Player order, order of military, use stability to break ties. So I am still going to be first. There was no war, because there, was, there wasn't even a possibility of him getting war this round. Stability, a point if our stability is better than the shadows. There we go. Famine, so we need to pay three food for the famine. Out there. And end of age scoring. So now we move on to the end of the age of antiquity. If we have more books than the shadow, we get three points, which we do. And there we go. We started off with four points, so we are now at nine. And, and various points dotted around the board. So that finishes off for us the Age of Antiquity. So I think I'll leave this video there for now. I think I've shown you the basics of what's going on. The only, the only big thing I'd like to see is a war. So the, the last few times I've played, the dummy player has been crazy into wars. But this, that hasn't really happened so far. So hopefully I'll get to show you that because I'm going to play through the full game, but if you'd like to see the rest of the game, I'll put a link on the screen somewhere. Bye.